If I get enough of God's word in me, it begins the faith process. If I get enough of his word long enough, I will see my harvest. Because this is where we miss it sometimes. If I get enough of God's word in me, it begins the faith process. If I get enough of his word long enough, then I will see my harvest. The way that you're going to see your harvest ripen is to totally dependent on how much word you are getting into yourself on a regular basis. Tell you what, if it wasn't for the Lord, you know, if it really just wasn't for the Lord, just thank you, Lord. Where would we be without Jesus? I mean, that's such a cliche, isn't it? But where would we really be without Jesus Christ? You know, I am, you know, just when you think you've heard it and seen it all, somebody will go figure out another way to do something bad to another person. You know, and it just seems like the the, the dark's getting darker, but the light's getting lighter. And I know a lot of this has to do with end times and things like that, amen. But you really have to stay anchored in love. You really do, you know, because you don't want your heart to get hard. You don't want to be calloused because there's so much pain in the world right now. There's just so much, um, you know, we just don't, don't ever take for granted that sweet Savior that lives in your heart. And, uh, you know, one day, maybe when we get to heaven, an angel's going to hand you a DVD. And he's going to say, these are all the times that I intervened that you didn't even know about and protected you from some of the most ungodly, unmerciful torment this world has ever seen. Amen? It's good. You have to know the Lord in these days. There's just no way you're going to make it without having Jesus. Amen? There's just no way. Well, I want to talk tonight about faith. Amen? But I want to continue to talk about tonight the process of faith. And my dad kind of hit on it a little bit when we were, um, when he was doing the transition. And, you know, why don't we see things immediately? Amen? That's a valid question. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered what the, why that thing that you're believing for hasn't happened yet? Is that a valid, normal, that's a very healthy, valid, normal plan. But we have to understand, first and foremost, that faith is a process. Amen? And there's a reason that God set it up this way. As I was sitting over there in worship, I just got a picture of, and it's when we're we're using our faith, it's kind of like you have an imaginary rope connected to whatever it is that you're believing for. And every day when you grow and you add to your faith, you are pulling one more rung to, to that thing towards you. Now I am pulling by faith, and I saw tonight that I need to be using my faith on a lot more different things. Can I just tell you that's why God gave them a portion of His faith to us? Because he knew how much we were going to have to believe for and how much we were going to have to use it for. And he said, they don't have enough faith, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them a measure of my faith because my faith is inexhaustible. My faith never runs out. And if they will walk the steps of faith and do the things that the men of old did by faith, they'll have the same results that they had. So when I am using my faith and I am speaking the word, I am pulling whatever it is, that thing that I'm believing is, towards me. Amen? And it's not going to fully manifest until I've pulled that last piece. It doesn't manifest on the first pull. It manifests on the last pull. And how many times have we gotten to that last pull and just said, oh, this isn't working, and we put some rope back in? Oh, it happened for them, but it never happens to me. We let that rope go back in. And we start talking contrary to what we're believing for. We start getting, we start eating, we start doing what Adam and Eve did, and we start trying to get knowledge from another tree. 
And so we start releasing our faith. Releasing our faith is kind of like a fishing line with a fish on it. I am pulling. Faith is a pull. Amen? Faith is, I hate to use the word struggle, but it is a struggle. It is a pulling of your will. You are laying aside your five physical senses, and you are putting your faith in a line that you can't see that's pulling something to you that you can't see. And we got to keep that thing tight. You ever seen Jaws? Jaws was on the TV the other night. Never went swimming again after 1975. (laughs) Amen? But man, when they hooked that fish for the first time, and he clicks it, and he pulls, there was something on the end of that line. Well, it took another hour before you saw the shark. But there was something big on the end of that line. And that's what we're doing by faith tonight. We have got something, you've got something hooked. Amen? And it's big. It's really big. But what you don't want to do is say, well, I can't see the fish. How do I know it's really there? See, the other guy on the boat tried to tell him, no, no, that's just a sailfish. No, no, that's just another type of fish. The guy that was holding on to the line, he knew exactly what it was because he could feel the weight of the thing that was pulling against him. See, that's your faith walk. God did that on purpose purpose to keep us engaged in the process. If I wish ran around just getting immediately everything that I believe for, where's the faith in that? It's instant. And we live in the most instant society that there is. Everything. I have instant oatmeal in my desk drawer. Amen. Everything's instant. I can eat instantly. I can, I can go to a movie instantly. Now with a phone, I can, I can communicate instantly. We live in an instantly situation. But it doesn't take any faith to have immediately. Now, there are immediately's in the Bible, and I'm going to show you how you get it immediately. Okay? And it's not the way that we think it is. You ready? All right. Matthew 4.28. I'm sorry, Mark 4.28. It says, the earth produces, acting by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe and permits, immediately... He sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle because the harvest stands ready. You will see your immediately when your harvest ripens. Now, right there in that verse, he lists the entire process of faith. And I want you to notice that you have the long-standing time, amen, beginning in verse 28 where it says, first the blade then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. Does that happen overnight? Is there any crop that you can plant today that you'll get a harvest from tomorrow in the plant world? Not anything that you could eat, right? Like if I wanted a loaf of bread, if I planted a wheat seed tonight, am I going to have bread tomorrow? How long is it going to take? Any farmers? How long does the harvest take for wheat, corn? Oh my gosh, if there's an apocalypse, we're doomed. (laughs) <laughs> we're all going to make a run on Walmart and get all the canned food. Quick, everybody, get a can opener. We're going to make it. No. But how long does it take? What's a harvest, a, car, a corn harvest? Come, come on, Steve, help me out. Two months. Two months. Two months. Amen? Six months. Fidel in the back says six months to get a harvest sometimes from a seed you've sown. And then do you notice that it says when it ripens, Then immediately? See, sometimes when you see people getting the end of their faith project and you think, oh, that was immediately? No, no, no. You have no idea how long they've been standing because they've planted that seed. It could have been six months. It could have been a year. But when you see it, you go, oh, it was immediately. Well, yeah, it was immediately. But they had gone through the process and the steps of faith had been faithful They stood and believed. They watered. Amen? And then immediately when it ripened, then it was time to get harvested. You ever hear somebody that's been around for 40 years and then they say, oh, this person just burst onto the scene. They were were an overnight sensation. 
No, they weren't. They'd been working their tails off for 20 years, and they finally got a break. They were finally in the right place at the right time with the right song, got heard by the right producer, and guess what? They immediately showed up. But without hard work, planting, diligence, integrity, character, and faith, there never will be an immediately. It's just hoping and wishing. It's just hoping and wishing. Now look, if you want to get a harvest, this is going to be the most technical part of my service tonight, okay? If you want a harvest, you have to plant seed. That's deep. I'm going to say it again. If you want to get a harvest, you have to plant seed. It is the system that God put in place in the book of Genesis. The second thing that he gave man, first thing he gave man was dominion. Second thing that he gave him was seed. Your seed is the key to your future. We were never supposed to live, have a living. We were supposed to have a sowing and a reaping and a harvesting. That's how God set it up for us in the earth. Amen? So, why don't we see instant results? It's because that would not take any faith. John 20, 29. It says, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen? Your faith is only going to be built in the unseen world. Your faith is only going to be seen in the unseen world. Remember, Hebrews 11.1 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, this is important. If you can see it or you can do it yourself, you do not need faith to do it. Amen? If you can see it or you can do it yourself, you don't need any faith to do it. Faith only works in the unseen world. That's the only place that it can grow. So, why don't we see more instant healings? Or why aren't we immediately healed when we pray? You ever wondered about that one? Amen? The Bible says we'll lay hands on the sick. And the what? The what? What's recover mean? What's recover mean? Restoration. Does recovery or restoration always take place instantly? There's a process. The Bible uses the word recovery. There is a process at times to your healing. Okay? Listen to me. I believe that when we lay hands on you that you're healed immediately. But the manifestation of the healing is up to you. Healing can be given in a couple of different ways. When Pastor Tracy Harris comes, or Pastor Mary Jean, or Pastor Michelle, Pastor Jack, when someone is operating in the gifts of healing, and you receive your healing, you are getting it most of the time off of the speaker's faith, because they are walking in that gift. A Benny Hand meeting. The gifts of healing are in operation. Amen? That is a gift that Benny Hinn walks in. The gifts of healing. But when you and I are laying hands on somebody and we're just doing it by faith, then a lot of times there is going to be a process to that healing. Amen? I've only been healed one time instantly in my whole life. And we were in Africa. We were in Kenya. And I wanted to be... Um, uh, um, you know, the people there were so hospitable in Kenya, you know. And when you walked by a hut during the morning and there was a little goat playing outside, when you came back at lunch, that goat had been slaughtered and dressed and was being cooked for you to have for dinner that night. That's how much respect and honor they had for Christian people that came to their village. It was an honor. Well, who am I to turn down Cabrito? You know what I'm saying? Or ram's bud, or... Uh, so, hey, I'm a man of faith. These people have cooked for me. 
therefore I will eat. Well, I did not have the faith to eat. And I ate and I turned as green as my dad's shirt. And I'll never forget, there was a young pastor, sweetest spirit I'd ever seen, who was called to the Luau tribe up in the mountains around Lake Victoria in Kenya. And he, 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 everything was mountains in Lake Victoria. That's why they win all the marathons, is because they train on mountains and at high altitude. They're just incredible athletes. And so he had a Ninja Turtles backpack. I'll never forget, because that's what he carried all his stuff in, was this little Ninja Turtle and so we're in one of the night meetings in this hut or whatever, and I'm turning green, and I know that things are about to get real bad real fast. And you're 10,000 miles away from anything or anybody to give you any comfort. And this pastor walked over and put his hand on me and just said, in the name of Jesus. And I was instantly healed, instantly healed. That's the only time that's ever happened in my life. Now, I've been healed many times. Amen. Every time I get healed. But it doesn't always happen the same way. Why is that? Because there is a process to it. Amen? What happens to we as faith people is we beat up on ourselves because we think that we should get healed instantly. And when we don't, we think there's something wrong. We start questioning our faith, questioning our stance. There's got to be a reason. Do I have open door to the enemy? Is the devil? How have I done it? In reality, folks, it is a process. Amen? And I will show you tonight that if you will continue to work the process, healing always comes. Say that with me. Healing always comes. It always comes but it might not be just that immediately where you get the full manifestation. It always comes when I release the prayer of faith. It always comes. It always happens. It always works. But when we sit there and start waiting to see if I'm feeling, if we're judging the word of God by how I feel, then I'm living out of two different pockets. Amen? Because one is a spirit thing and the other is a feeling thing. I cannot use my five physical senses to tell me whether the Word of God is working or not. I just have to believe. And that's when we're getting over into this whole unknown, into the unseen world. I have to believe. Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You might not be feeling any manifestation of healing at all. <laughs> you feel worse. Right? It's getting worse. It's getting worse. No, no, no. Once again, that is your five physical senses trying to tell you is trying to elevate itself above the word of God. Amen. Faith is a process. We are immediately healed. We are immediately healed. The minute I speak in faith, the word of God, healing takes place in my body. But it is a process for it to fully manifest till I am walking in the fullness of my healing. Go listen to Brother Hagen. Go read any of Brother Hagen's books. How many months, how many years did he lay bed fast? And was it Commerce, Texas? Where was the little town? McKinney, Texas. He was bed. He was, um, when he was born, they did not have incubators and things like that. And he had a deformed heart and he had a blood disease. And he, the boy was messed up. And they would, when he got older, they just gave him, they always said, you were going to die, you're going to die. And even the ministers would come by and just say, son, just be patient, it'll all be over soon. Well, he got a Bible and he started reading the Bible. And guess what? He started finding out that healing was a part of his covenant. Well, he received his healing, but it was days, months, years before it fully manifested where he was walking completely and totally free but when did he get healed? When he believed. See, you get what you're believing for when you believe. It's not when it manifests that it's yours. It's when you believe. Whatever it is that you're believing for right now, you're not waiting to see it. No, no, I already have it. It should not be a surprise when it shows up. Because you've already taken ownership of it. Amen? Pastor's pancake story. Amen? Eating the pancakes. 2.4 million, you know, the check that came in. Lord, should not be running naked down the street, excited that the church has paid off? No, because you received it months ago. This was just the process. It, the harvest ripened. And then you go in immediately 
and you pull in the harvest. Amen? Amen. Faith is a process. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty him who's oppressed, and to proclaim the favorable and acceptable year of the Lord, the recovery of sight to the blind. And I'll show you an exact example of that verse. Mark chapter 8. Beginning in verse 22 of Mark chapter 8. It says, And they came to Bethsaida, and the people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. Verse 23. And he caught the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him, Do you possibly see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again. Say again. And the man looked intently, that is, fixed his eyes on definite objects, and he was restored. Say restored. And saw everything distinctly, even what was at a distance. Jesus had to lay hands on this man Two times. Two times before the man actually got full manifestation of his healing. Healing always comes, but sometimes it is a process. Sometimes we can be at such a deficit internally that it takes longer for the word to work for us. That helps answer the questions, why do good people, why do bad things happen to good people? I prayed for sister so-and-so. I prayed for sister so-and-so. Sometimes before people cry out to the Lord, they have let things progress so long that there's not enough time to flip it over where they've got more word than they do fear. I'm as serious as I can be. Sometimes we let things go so long And now all of a sudden we get a bad report. See, that's why I want to start using my faith on a bar of soap right now. That's why I want to start using my faith for a new roof, for my college tuition, for my vehicles, for my kids, for my health, for my safety. See, I want to have so many invisible ropes in the air. I want to be using my faith. Amen? Because when something tries to come and overwhelm me, I want to say, no, no. See, I fought the lion and I fought the bear and Goliath. You ain't nothing but number three in line. The problem is, is because we never took the time to develop our faith to fight the lion. We never took time to develop our faith to fight the bear. When Goliath shows up, we wet our spiritual pants and run out the door. That was terrible. I can't believe I just said that, but it was funny. We'll edit that out, won't we, Jonathan? No, leave it in. It was good. We have to be prepared. Amen? We have to be prepared, and that's why we want to use faith. as Whatever you're using your faith on, you are developing muscle in that area. We constantly, look at me, there is never going to come a time in your life, in this or the afterlife, where you're not using your faith for something. You are always going to be believing God for something. There is never going to be a time in your life where you are going to be allowed to be comfortable. Because it's the faith that keeps you engaged in the things of God. It's the thing that's building your endurance. It's the thing that's building your strength. It's the thing that you are constantly using. If you don't have something to believe for, call me. I got a good list. You can you take 20 through 30 for me. Amen? Each and every one of us need to have faith projects that we are using. We need to be using our faith every day. You need to be developing that faith every single day day. So Jesus laid hands on him two times. So let me ask you, when was the man healed? The first time he laid hands on him or the second? 
the first. Now, did you notice a key line in that scripture, what Jesus did first? Let me show you. Verse 22. And they came to Bethsaida, and the people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. This is the first thing that Jesus did. And he caught the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Obviously, in that village, there was more doubt and unbelief than there was faith. Jesus, God, could not operate. Remember when he went to his own hometown, he couldn't do mighty miracles? It's the same situation here. He had to take that man out of where he was and take him to a new place to get him to listen to what he was saying so that he could receive his healing. That's why you got to go to a church that preaches faith. That's why you have to get around the right company of people that know how to believe God. See, when I call somebody, I need somebody that knows how to believe God. I don't need somebody to tell me, oh, just be patient, brother. God works in mysterious ways. His ways are higher than our ways, Jack. And you just never know what God's going to do. I know exactly what God's going to do under every circumstance and every situation because he says so in his word. And when you get to that point where you believe. See, some of you moms, you know how to believe. Some of you ladies, you know how to believe. Amen. That's why Moses sent all the ladies to get everything from the Egyptians before they left town. Because those ladies say, we know where it all is, and we're not leaving until we get it all. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Am I helping anybody tonight? Hebrews chapter 6. And these are, my, these are two great verses. And this perfectly shows, love of my life, would you be willing to hand me a small bottle of water under there on that second shelf? Thank you so much. It's my life. Michelle, give her a big hand. Amen. Michelle Pigeon. Uh, I'm going to read it out of the Amplified, and it's Hebrews chapter 6, 11 and 12. It says... But we do strongly and earnestly desire for each of you to show the same diligence and sincerity all the way through in realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end. In order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggers, but imitators, behaving as do those who through faith by their leaning of the entire personality on God in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in His power and wisdom and goodness, and by practice of patient endurance and waiting, are now inheriting the promise. You cannot develop any endurance or patience if you are constantly getting things immediately. When we are using our faith all day and every day, it is keeping us engaged in the process. When I am not believing God for something, the Bible just says that I am a spiritual sluggard. If you are not using your faith for something right now, you are a spiritual sluggard. That's that's harsh, but that's the truth. This is the process. We are constantly going to be pulling on those ropes, believing God for things. Folks, even when we get to heaven, you're still going to have to use your faith. Amen? Amen? Do you know Adam and Eve had to use their faith? Even before they fell, they were created to walk by faith, just like you and I are. Now, there was no contaminants, but they still had to use their faith. You and I, even in the next age, are going to have to use our faith. And God gives us this because we need endurance. We need to learn patience. We need to learn how to stand. Amen? Because that's where your strength is. That's when... An earthquake comes, you speak to that earthquake. When a fire comes, you speak to that fire. Because we have been so diligently trained and patient in standing and believing God that we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we hear. We're not moved by what the television says. I believe God. I put His Word 
first place. And it's so easy to say. But I want us to each examine our lives and you, well, let's find out really who's really the God of our life. How many areas of my life am I the God? I'm my provider. I made that decision. See, we use faith sometimes like we're going to Luby's. I'll have a little of this and a little of that, spoonful of this, but I don't want that. No, I definitely don't want that. I don't know what that is. Can I get that on the Luan? No. We have to use our faith. See, God's interested in the whole man. He's interested in every area of our life. It's not always just faith for material goods. We should all be believing God for the lost. Amen? Every single one of us should be using our faith nonstop every day. You should have a list of people that you pray for every day. Every day we should be laying hands. We should be adding to that list. Father, I just thank you. I just claim them for my family. I've been praying for a group of guys, and I'm seeing breakthrough in their lives. I'm getting one-on-one conversations with them. See, the funny thing is I prayed that Lord release laborers into the harvest, and he said, guess what? You're the laborer. Go release yourself. Okay. Did a wedding for a guy. Been praying for him. Spoke the name of Jesus at his wedding. Scared the fire out of him. Told him what a real man was. Told him what a real godly husband was. Told him what his responsibility was as a spiritual head of his household. Watched his knees start to shake because he'd never heard that before. Amen? We have to use our faith. It is what keeps us spiritually in shape. Amen? We have to be in shape to run the race that God's called us. Amen? That's why I constantly want to be using my faith in every area. Don't just, I'm just saving my faith for the big things. No, 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 no. Use it for the little things. Believe God for a parking space. Believe God for a raise. Believe God when they go to Six Flags, they're going to get in the front. Use your faith. Constantly be engaging your faith. Constantly be using resistance because it's the resistance that builds the muscle. And we're in need of spiritual muscle. Amen? We're in need of spiritual muscle. Diligence and sincerity take time. Amen? Diligence and sincerity take time. You do not develop those overnight. Amen? It does not happen overnight. We are an active partner in the faith process. If we got what we believe for immediately without faith, then there would be no endurance. Amen? The minute that you release your faith command, amen, whatever it is that you're believing for starts coming towards you. Amen? The minute that you Stand. Now, we, it, there's, there's a process to faith. Amen? Number one, what's the first thing I need to find out with what I'm believing for is according to his will. Amen? I cannot believe God for another man's wife or husband. Amen? Why is that? Because that goes against his will. Amen? So I want to go into the word of God. I want to find a promise of what I'm believing for. I like believing God for the lost. There's lots of scriptures. Second Timothy It's God's will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That pretty much hammers right now what God's will is concerning man. What's his will? For all men. He didn't say some men, did he? It's God's will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So therefore, I know what his will is in that area. Therefore, when I go and pray for the lost, I'm already lined up with what he believes. So then I add extra verses and I talk about Matthew about pray the Lord of the harvest to release laborers into his harvest. So now I know what his will is. Now I'm praying an active prayer of now sending people to go in and get them. And then I add 2 Corinthians that tells me that today is the day that now is the acceptable time for salvation. So I'm believing God right now according to his will that there's laborers released into their harvest and that I can believe immediately and now that they'll be saved I am loaded for bear. That is the process of faith. And I lay my hands on that card each morning, not almost every morning. There are other times where I'm praying for other things. And I call them by name. And I just thank you, God, that today, X, Y, Z, and the list keeps growing. 
amen, are going to be saved into the household of faith. Amen. By faith. I am using my faith. Now, I'm also believing God for material things. I've got kids in college. Lord, I just thank you every day. According to Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and you add no sorrow to it. Lord, no good thing do you withhold from those whom you love. Father, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Man, I'm speaking that word because we're believing God for the tuition for all of our kids. So I am pulling... I got word in me, and I am constantly pulling in many different ropes. And look, it's not tiring. Things of the Spirit are not tiring. The things of the flesh, that's what will kill you. That's where stress is. That's where worry is. You know, you can't medicate your spirit. You can only medicate your soul. There's not a pill in the world you can take that can touch your spirit. There's no antidepressants in the spirit. There's no anxiety drugs in the spirit. There's no ADHD in the spirit. Those are soulish things. Amen? When I am using my faith, I am taking the word of God and I am framing the world with the words that I speak, creating the reality that I'm believing for. Amen? But it is a constant thing. It is, an, it is an all the time. It's something that I'm constantly using. There's never going to be a day that comes by that I quit using my faith. Yeah. Amen. I'm always going to be pulling something to me. I'm always going to believe, believe in God for somebody or for something. You might want to write this down. If I get enough of God's word in me, it begins the faith process. If I get enough of his word long enough, I will see my harvest. Because this is where we miss it sometimes. If I get enough of God's word in me, it begins the faith process. If I get enough of his word long enough, then I will see my harvest. The way that you're going to see your harvest ripened is totally dependent on how much word you are getting into yourself on a regular basis. Amen? Little harvest, little seed. Big harvest, big seed. That's why it's so important for us to when we take the word of God, we have, it's not just something, oh, I just take it in the morning and then I forget about it and if I come back around to it the next day, you're not serious about what you're believing for. Amen? If you're really serious about it, it becomes the most dominant thought of what you're believing. Not in a negative way and not in a worrying way, but it's important to you. When it's important, like if someone's important to you, don't you remember their name? How many seeds have we sown and we don't even remember its name because it wasn't that important to us? I have received every single thing I've ever believed for, but there's a lot of stuff that I started the process and just let it go. When I did the full faith process, I always see manifestation of what I'm believing for. Always, every time, hands down. But when I did it half-heartedly, or I just kind of did it on a whim, or I didn't really fully engage and do the process, those things, just those seeds just washed away. Amen? We have to stay active. We have to get to this place, and I had to look up the word today, critical mass. You have got to get to the point, glory, what's critical mass? It's the threshold that you need, right? In order to even obtain a minimum response, there has to be enough of a stimuli or something to produce critical mass in something. We have to get that way with our faith. When you get to your faith, to critical mass, that means you've got one more thought of faith than you do of fear. When faith is ruling and fear is not, you are going to see the manifestation of what you're believing for. But you have to keep it in your eyes. You have to keep it in your ears. You have to keep it coming out of your mouth. You have to turn off the television. You have to turn off the TV. You have to turn off all the other the, the distractions in the world. You have to get some people out of your life because they don't know how to talk. you got to get away. Jesus had to get that man out of Bethsaida because those people didn't know how to talk. They were talking him to death. They had to get him someplace where, the, he could, where he could not hear them anymore. There's family members you need to separate from because they're speaking death over your situation. You, if you're serious 
And I've heard many great faith preachers, when they had a situation where a family member or somebody was in the hospital, they put a sign on the door. You walk in this room and you say one word contrary to the word of God. You come in this room and you say one thing that doesn't line up with the word, you will be escorted out physically because we are serious about what's happening in this room. Don't you come in there with that, oh, it'll be over soon. Don't come in with your platitudes and your foolish emotional, well, you'll be in a better place. No, no, no. You want somebody to walk in that hospital room that starts speaking the word of God. You want somebody to walk in there and start kicking devil's butts and knocking things over and speaking the word over that situation. I don't need comfort. I don't need any comfort. I need you to come slap me around. Speak the word. Speak the word only. Now I'll finish with this. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. Remember, it says that God's word is like medicine. Remember that. God's word, whatever area of your life that you need medicine, God's word is the answer. But let me ask you this. Even in the earthly things, is there any medicine that you only take one time? No. If you get any type of a prescription or anything like that, this prescription is very detailed on the bottle. Does it say take one whenever you feel like it? Does it say take one? Ah, take one. Take two or three a day, but it doesn't really matter when or where or what time. Or No, no. There is a methodical pathway to healing through medicine. It's the same way through the Word of God. Take it in the morning. Take it with food. Take it at lunch. Take it with food. Take it at dinner. Amen? You want to, if the Word is like medicine, you want to take it like a medicine. You want to finish the bottle and you want to follow the instructions. Amen? Don't try and outthink the doctor. I know better. Amen? I am going to follow that prescription. The Bible is a prescription for life for the believer. If you will take his word like medicine, healing starts when you take the first dose. You're going to see the full manifestation when you finish the bottle. The Bible is the exact same way. You want to take that first dose. I believe that I'm healed when I took that first dose. But it might be a few days before I see the full manifestation. But guess what? Even in faith circles, we get healed quicker. Maybe we do have to go through the process and maybe we do feel a little bit bad. But guess what? You're not spending six months, eight months, ten months. You might go through something. For somebody, it might be six weeks. For you, it's just a week. Praise God. That's a healing. That's a miracle. You praise God for that. Maybe it didn't take as deep a root in you as it did in someone else. Maybe you dealt with a few of the symptoms, but it didn't do that to me. Amen? Because that's the word, because you are working. That word is working in you. Healing is faster than death. Amen? It works faster. That's why you want to get it quick, though. You want to get on it fast. You don't want to wait I want to start applying the word. Get on, a, get on a health program where now I am eating on the word of God. So I'm in a preventative program so it doesn't even attack me. How about getting an inoculation or a vaccine of the word where I walk in healing? I don't have to get a flu shot. I got an Isaiah 53 shot. Amen. But guess what? We will laugh and say, oh, we do it, but we don't do it. And then you get sick because we said we were going to do it. We thought we were going to do it, but we never actually sat down and applied those scriptures to our lives. You have to do the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand up. Yes, ma'am. We're going to read it. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard. For out of it flows the springs of life. 
Put away from you false and dishonest speech and willful and contrary talk. Put far from you. Amen? Amen. Keep the word in front of your eyes. Keep the word in your ears. Keep the word coming out of your mouth. Keep the word. Talk the word with your spouse. Talk the word with your friends. Talk the word to yourself. If you just got to get in the mirror and talk to somebody with some sense, do that. Just speak the word to yourself. Amen? But say it out loud. You need to hear yourself say it. It doesn't say think on the word. It says speak the word. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that is both quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I thank you right now, Lord, that the word is working mightily in each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, for just revelation. It's not the word that you know. It's the word that you have revelation of that's going to bring the healing. And it takes time to get a revelation. Amen. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, for revelation for each and every one of us through the word. I'm asking you, Lord, to just display yourself, Lord, through the word of God to each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Love you. We'll see you Sunday.